Okay, any questions on <clears throat> Friday then? Again, we're writing the integral, top minus bottom. Find the antiderivatives, plug in 2 and 0, we're done. And then uh, part B says uh, write but do not evaluate an integral expression that gives the volume of the solid <clears throat> that when it's rotated over the line y equals 4. So in our picture, we have our cosine function, we have our parabola, okay, and we're going to rotate it over the line y equals 4, which is up here <clears throat> at the top end of the region. And a vertical slice here would give us washers. So we want to set up a washer method situation, 0 to 2 again, pi out front. <clears throat> the distance between the outside radius and the revolving line, of course, is going to be, remember, this part right here would be the bottom function. Okay? Whether it's in this part or this part, it doesn't really matter whether it's above or below the x-axis. Okay? And then the 4 minus that would give us the distance from the 4 line to the bottom of that region. So if we do 4 minus... And then we do 4 cosine of pi over 4x squared. And then the inside, of course, is going to be 4 minus the top function. So 4 minus, and then it's uh, 2x squared minus 6x plus 4, all squared dx. Okay, that would be our washer method setup for that. And they gave three points for that. Two for uh, having the integrand right, having the 4 minus the top squared, excuse me, 4 minus the bottom squared. <coughs> uh, you know what, I did that backwards, sorry. That's the, should be these two switched, sorry. So the bottom function is the parabola, which needs to be, of course, then the outside radius, so 4 minus the parabola, 4 minus the cosine in this one, okay. So 2 there, and then also 1 for having the limits of the constants, so having the pi, and the 0 to 2, you got a point. Roger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's probably might even be better because then you don't have to bother writing the whole thing out and messing anything up. Um, as long as the functions have names, okay, f of x and g of x, okay, you can write it in there as 4 minus f of x or 4 minus g of x, and okay, that's totally acceptable too. Okay, And like I said, probably even better than that way you don't have to mess around with you know, writing something down wrong or whatever. All right, and then finally, this time the uh, region is a solid, uh, the base of a solid, and each cross section that's perpendicular to the x-axis is a square, and we want to write, but do not evaluate. And again, if it's a square, identify what the um, <coughs> uh, shape is. In this case, it's a square, of course, and we need to know if this were to come out of the paper at us as a square, okay, then the area would be S squared. And S here, of course, is the top function minus the bottom function. So top function we know is G. Bottom function we know is F. Okay. And if we write an integral from 0 to 2 of that, okay. then we're good to go. Okay. All right. <coughs> um, they gave two points for that. One for having the integrand right. Top minus bottom all squared. And one for having the limits. And that's it. Questions on part of that one, number five. All right. <clears throat> Let's see what we got then for number six. We have a differential equation. <clears throat> dy dx is e to the y, 3x squared minus 6x. And <clears throat> says it passes through 1, 0. And we want to write an equation for the line tangent to the graph of f. So we go y minus 0, x minus 1. And then the slope at that point is going to be given by the evaluation of this at 1, 0. Remember, this is the slope of our f function. So if we put e to the 0, that would be 1. And then if we go 3 times 1 squared minus 6 times 1, we get negative 3. So that would be our slope. Okay. And then they want us to use that to approximate 1.2. So it'll be negative 3 times 0.2 and negative 0.6 would be our approximation. They gave three points for all that. <clears throat> if you got the derivative at that point in question, you got a point. If you wrote the equation for the tangent line correctly, which is this, you get a point. And if you got the approximation, negative 0.6, you got another point. Okay. All right. <clears throat> and in part B, 
It's a uh, find a solution to the differential equation problem. So we're going to separate variables. So <clears throat> if we take our dy dx equals e to the y, 3x squared minus 6x. We have 1 over e to the y dy over here, 3x squared minus 6x dx over here. Separating variables is worth the point. Okay, antiderivatives, keep in mind that if I have 1 over e to the y, that's really e to the negative y. So the antiderivative would be itself divided by the derivative of the argument. So itself would be e to the negative y divided by the derivative of the argument would be <coughs> negative 1. Okay, divide by negative 1 times negative 1, same result. We'd have x cubed minus uh, 3x squared plus c over here on the side. So <coughs> two points for that. They gave you, if you found the antiderivative on both sides, you got two points, one on each. If you added plus c, you got a point. And then the initial condition, again, was 1, 0. So plugging in a 0 here and a 1 here, we would wind up with a e to the 0, which is 1, but it's negative. So negative 1 over here. We'd have 1 minus 3 over here. Ultimately, this would be negative 2. Add it to the other side, we'd get uh, 1 equals c. Okay. All right. <clears throat> and that's a worth point. Last point is for solving that equation for y. Questions up to that point before we solve for y? All right, and then going back to our negative e to the negative y equals x cubed minus 3x squared plus 1. And if we're going to solve this for y, I would divide first. So we'd have negative x cubed plus 3x squared minus 1. And then if we uh, want to get rid of the e function, we stick natural log of both sides. And then, of course, we can uh, divide by negative 1. And we get y equals negative natural log of negative x cubed plus 3x squared minus 1. And that would do it. And as typical, the most tedious part of the whole problem solving for y is only worth one point, where seemingly easier parts are worth more, which ultimately is good for you guys because we have a differential equation problem that we have to separate and solve. Hopefully it'll be a pretty easy five or six points. Okay. Questions? Wouldn't that be awesome? 100% same question.